And it was amazing because he's making decisions that relate to them. But then he added this and he said, you know, this technology is moving so quickly. I bet one day we'll have like the potential of a 3D version of the internet where it'll look like a little video game and you can move like your character around in it. And I'm looking at him like, you're talking about virtual worlds, you're talking about second life. And that's not one day, you know, that was invented five years ago. But you're viewing this thing as it might happen one day. And so it shows you how we're often behind the pace of the issues that come out of um, using these systems. And the problem with that is that we often then make decisions, you know, policies, rules that relate to them that uh, lead us down a certain direction that we may not may not turn out to be the best one. So I'll give you a uh, doctrine illustration and an ethical illustration. Doctrine. What is the best way to fight with these systems? Is it something that you want centralized command and distributed firepower? Like the mothership model? Like the way we're planning to utilize the um, LCS? Or is it something that you want distributed command and concentrated firepower? Like a swarm model? So is it that you want a point and click style of warfare where you got the people in the middle controlling the systems, point click, point click, point move? Or is it that you want a lot of systems basically finding the enemy and then converging on them and attacking them from lots of different directions? Those are two very different doctrines. Which one's better? Well, we don't know. I do know that if we choose the wrong one, we may be like the British and the French after World War I. Because the very same debate happened with tanks. You know, should tanks be distributed around the force just to support infantry? Or should they be concentrated into a single iron punch, a blitzkrieg? You choose the wrong one, you're in trouble. Are we having that kind of debate about doctrine right now? The same thing on ethics. I'll give you an ethical question. Do robots have the right of self-defense? Now, one argument could be, well, they are national property, so if someone targets them, it's just as if there is someone inside the system. And in fact, they don't even have to shoot at them, just like if you um, light up one of our planes with uh, surface-to-air missile radar, you don't even have to fire for us to be able to shoot back at you and kill you on the ground. It's merely the act of painting us with that radar. It's the threat that's enough for our ROEs to kick in. The other argument could be right of self-defense. You're talking about robots. How can they have rights? And in fact, how could they have the right of a self-defense? There's no self in it. The US Air Force has already concluded that the second is the interpretation that we're gonna take. The US Air Force has actually pushed the cause of robot rights further than any other entity out there, further than science fiction even does. You target one of our drones, even with a radar, we have the right to kill you on the ground right now. Dr. Singer, on behalf of uh, the Naval Academy, I'd like to thank you for coming and speaking with us tonight and uh, thank you for our appreciation. Thank you. And thank you all for your service to our nation. I really appreciate it.